when I saw Marlon go down on one knee, mm -hmm. and then he went down on the second knee, completely done. And it's different. There's a difference between being done that way and being done on the stool and you having the no mas situation and all these other things. Anyway, literally made to pilots go down on one knee and then on the second knee. And he literally, and from what I could, the body language said, I can't do this anymore. Okay. And I've been there before <laughs> on my feet. So I knew, I knew what I saw. And I say, yo, that was special. Welcome to Top Stories. I am George Jakovic alongside the champions, Pauli Malinaji, the champion, Chris Algieri, and the Hall of Famer, analyst, trainer, the great Teddy Atlas. Guys, Merry Christmas. You know, Pro Box TV is the gift that keeps on giving because, honestly, to me, every day feels like Christmas talking to you guys. But today, we are talking about some of the best events of 2023. Chris, you know, a lot of times we tend to focus on the the fights that aren't made in the negative in boxing. But today, Paulie, we're all positive, talking about all the good things in boxing. And that's what we're going to focus on in 2023. And our first category, start with you, Chris, fight of the year. There's been a lot of great fights, like especially even in December. We, we, we've had a lot of great fights. So, Chris, fight of the year 2023, what do you have? Okay, so on the great boxing year of 2023... My fight of the year is Luis Neri versus Azad Habanisian, mm. who is, uh, I think he was Crazy A, which I love. And he fights like a crazy man. And uh, he did that night too. I mean, such a great fight. And it was one of those fights where going into it, all the people who really knew these two guys, boxing writers, boxing heads like us, knew it was going to be a good fight. And the people were calling it, hey, this is a potential fight of the year. But then it lived up to it. That's rare. When you expect when you expect fireworks and then both guys deliver, both guys deliver. I'm a big fan of Neri. I think he's a fantastic fighter. Great boxer puncher. He can box. He can punch. He's got defense. He's tough. He's got power. He stops guys. Uh, he's in fights. He doesn't mind you know getting getting in there down and dirty. So uh, this is one of those fights. And Azat, man, he is just a bull. He is a powerful guy. He definitely came in fantastic shape. Um, also has very good skills and tough as nails. Even when he got stopped later on, which I thought was a little bit early, um, he was he, he was waving on Aniri to come in, you know, to come come get me. He's, ah, I got rocked. He actually was having a pretty good round. Um, he got rocked, got backed into the ropes, just got hit with too many punches. The ref stepped in. Again, I would have wished to see it go a little bit longer, but I think Neri is just one of those guys um, that if you want to be in a big dog fight, shh. He'll, he'll meet you halfway, and Azat was a perfect foil. So for me, that that fight, even though the expect expectation was high, I think it, it lived up to it. I think the only thing that could have made that, like, definitely the lock, like, no question, is if it wasn't for that little bit of questionable stoppage. But for me, it was still good enough. Yeah, that was a great fight. Neary won that on the knockout in the 11th. Uh, Teddy, how about you? been a great year. You, you've seen all these fights. What's your fight of the year? Yeah, there's so many of them to pick from. I mean, you had fights across the pond, which were great. You got guys like Wood and Warrington. And, you know, the great thing about across the pond is you get the great crowds. I always think the ambience adds to it. It's like going to a restaurant. How was the food? Great. The ambience made it really special, you know. And I, I think that that plays into the fights where the crowd becomes part of what makes it a great fight. So you get great crowds over there. Um, it helps. But I'm going to go with one that, could also be the upset of the year. And I think anytime you get in, Chris was just touching on it, anytime that you get a fight that could also be the upset of the year, it's usually a great fight. And that was Espinosa and Ramirez. I I just I just love Espinosa. I mean, the way that he's the underdog, but the way that he fought that fight. He fought like a man possessed. You know, he, he gets dropped, if my memory serves me correct, in the fourth round. He gets dropped by the Olympian, who was a gold medalist from Cuba, the great national team in Cuba. He gets dropped. He comes back. He gets hurt again in round the seventh round. You know, looks like maybe his night's going to be over. And then he just takes control of the fight. And then he it's back and forth. And, of course, that's part of what makes a great fight, you know, where you have the ebbs and flows. You had the ebbs and flows. And then you have to have a great closeout. You know, it's like a it's like a play on Broadway. you got to close it out. you got to drop the curtain. And they dropped the curtain where Espinosa 
just about stops him in the twelfth round. You know, he he drops him at the end. The bell. The funny thing about this fight is that the bell saved both fighters. The bell actually saved uh, Espinosa in the fourth, and the bell wound up saving uh, Ramirez in the twelfth. And because if that fight was 15, 20 seconds longer, Espinosa knocks him out. And like I said, the words I described to, or I used to describe it, he was like a man possessed. You know, he, he really he really lived up to the phrase that, you know, when fighters say it, they sometimes say it, but they mean it when they say it, but they don't attach the the reality's not there when the, when push comes to shove, that I'm not leaving this ring without the belt. Well, he, that was real. He was not leaving that ring without the belt. And also the saying, I'll go out on my shield. That was Espinosa. And, every, and that was both fighters, actually, to be honest with you. It's just that Espinosa changed it to another gear, and he was he there was just no stopping him. I mean, he, he got to the place where he was really what you describe as that unstoppable force, that unstoppable will, that that is just relentless you know yep. you it's kind of like the ocean coming to the shore you ain't stopping the ocean you're not you could build a castle it don't matter you could move the castle back it don't matter it's gonna knock the castle over the ocean ain't being beat by the shore and there was no way that espinoza was getting out of that ring without the title he was the ocean that night and um he finally flooded out ramirez just again could be Upset of the year, I'm going to yeah. make it fight of the year. Teddy, one. you said it, it. You know, that old saying, takes two to tango. Well, it takes two to make a great fight. And like you yeah. said, both those men fought their, fought their butts they, off they, that night. They sure did. They sure did. Both of them, you know, I mean, it was the kind of fight that you almost hate to have a loser. Where, you know, we get in those fights sometimes. But he, he just... He wasn't going to be denied. I mean, that was... If I was commentating that fight... That would be one of the words I would have used. Say, this is a guy who just tonight he was not gonna be denied. Yeah, new new champ. It's one of those great nights in boxing where a guy comes out of, of nowhere almost and and becomes a champ. And that's that's your fight of the year, Teddy and Paulie. A lot of great fights, Paulie. What do you got? Well, I'm gonna give. I'm gonna. Uh, you know, it's funny because we're at, the, at we're at a, a a festive time of the year, and I, I got to be honest, a lot of years. The fight of the year could have been at my, at my grandparents' house on, on Christmas Eve. Uh, <laughs> uh, certain nights. Uh, well, there were definitely some candidates for fight of the year on those nights. But my grandma's got Alzheimer's so those nights. Those nights uncles. Those... Uncles, right? Yeah. Probably. A lot of uncles in my house. Yeah. So, and a lot of fights. But um, I'll be honest with you. Uh, Teddy touched on it with uh, with uh, England and the, the the atmosphere and everything else. Actually, mm -hmm. Teddy actually made some points that I actually wasn't going to make on that. So that's uh, I, I I thank you, Teddy, because the atmosphere really does have a lot to do with fight of the year as well. It really when you go into a, an arena and there's been plenty of fights in England where I've gone to and it's just like it has just that that gripping feeling of uh, fights that I've even participated in or fights that have called. It has that gripping feeling. It certainly adds to the the uh emotion of the moment and of course then you get a a, a a terrific fight and the it just multiplies that that emotion multiplies those feelings uh lee wood is turning into a guy who has sort of become this arturo gotti-esque type of guy where he's sort of behind he did it against mcconlin um who is the the who is the uh, latino guy that he, he lost the title against and then he he came back and beat uh, bronco um yeah, Bronco's nickname. Uh, yeah, but that guy too. And then, and yeah. then of course, we're talking about Warrington. So he's getting this Arturo Gatti esque type of reputation without sort of like below the radar. I don't think people are realizing it. You know what I mean? They they're already watching it, and he and he has this this thing where he has to come back from behind. He did it with Conlon, and uh, like I said, he came back in the rematch uh, and to get the title back. And then and and with Warrington, it was turned into one of those kind of moments again. And you could kind of see it. You know, we talk about anticipated good fights. You could kind of see how Warrington is a guy who overwhelms you who kind of takes it to you and you could so you could kind of see wood maybe running into this kind of problem again with with against warrington you know and warrington is a really popular guy i don't know if uh if uh you, you guys uh have, have noticed that i I, remember, I was hearing about warrington even before he, he got the title and oh, before yeah. he came, because mm -hmm. he was yep. huge leads like he's got this insane popularity over there you know so warrington is a popular guy he's a big emotion in all his fights and of course he fights in that high emotion high octane style well 
You know what? It, 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 that's exactly what it was turning into. And and Warrington was doing. I felt like Warrington was doing well with with Wood, and Wood was getting it to himself into one of those kind of problems again. And I don't think it's resonating in in people's heads because at least it wasn't resonating in mine. I wasn't thinking like, okay, Lee Wood's gonna, you know, he's always at, he's always, he's, you know, with Arturo Gotti at a certain point, you really, you, you see him getting his butt kicked, and you'd be like, you never know, Arturo gonna land that nice shot. <laughs> with Lee, with Lee, it's not hasn't resonated yet, you know. And then he did it again, and then he, and then he lands the shot again with Warrington, and he, and he ends up, and he ends up getting the the, the stoppage win, and a, and, a, and a dramatic come from behind victory again. And so you, 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 for me, that's the fight of the year because it gives you all the dramatics, it gives you all the emotion, it gives you the momentum shifts, um, and ultimately. I guess Wood is going to be like the tide in that way too, and that he's eventually going to come back at you one way or another. You're not going to just get rid of Wood that easily. He's not going to go away that easily. Part of being a world champion is uh, something Teddy always talks about, the, having the attitude of a fighter. Lee Wood it does not resign himself to being defeated until the fight's over. You know what I mean? He's going to keep trying. He's going to keep trying to get you out of there. And somehow he keeps pulling this off, and he's turning into that kind of fighter where he's going to be a candidate for fighter of the year. He's going to be he's a candidate for one of the more exciting fighters in the sport. And uh, for me, the win over Warrington is my fight of the year in 2023. And That's a great fight. And he'll wind up with that nickname. He'll wind up with a nickname similar to Gaddy, where they were calling him like the cardiac kid. Yeah. You know, because <laughs> yeah. of what you just the human, the human highlight That's... reel. Yeah. Human hey, hey, Teddy, you know what? You brought up Arturo Gaddy. He might even, going back further, Matthew Saab Muhammad. He was that type mm. of fighter, too, yeah, that would was. just take a beating and Tough come back. Because Wood's legs looked like they were gone. And then out of nowhere, down on the scorecards. What a knockout, man. Those are some great fights. And though we're really some great fights. You know, the I mean, ingredients that make that, you know, they're both fights, quite frankly. You know, your defense is porous, quite frankly, in, you <laughs> right. know, in, in certain areas. Uh, and, and you got great heart, and great great resiliency, great chin, you know, and um, great will. And all the things that Paulie touched on that, uh, that Wood has. Having that a punch fight, helps. He, that fight really was incredible because i remember watching it and warrington took control of that fight he actually yeah. had he yeah yeah he was he i i actually was thinking he's too strong uh for wood right now he's just yeah. you know he's just imposing himself physically on him and then all of a sudden paulie described it perfectly he he just he he hangs in there hangs in there and then he catches him you know a perfect shot on the outside coming in and uh, and then he gets rid of him. Hey, it was Paulie, incredible before... that he got up. I remember the barrage of punches yeah. that he hit him with, and I was like, I can't believe he got up. Yeah, that first right hook hurt him, and then he followed up, and he was like, he was honed in, like it couldn't couldn't miss a shot after that. Yeah. And, and you talk about that atmosphere, Paulie, and, and we're going to talk about the monster Nayoya Nayoya anyway a little later. But those fights in Japan, they're still they're not as quiet as as they were for Tyson Douglas. But they're still very, very muted. Like the the, the atmosphere just it's just not there. Like it is. They don't in want. They don't want to be go phones. You know. They they gotta they gotta <laughs> they want to be uh, just right. They want to be right. correctly when they fight. That's no, how they view it. They look at us like we're a bunch of go phones. <laughs> you know, very polite. Very, well, uh... we we, we kind of are when we watch fights. So <laughs> yeah, I'm that's gladly, true. I'll gladly be a go phone while I'm watching a fight. Yeah. They're... Well, well Teddy Atlas, the light over there. It's, it is weird when you watch it. You're right. It's like, what am I in a library over here? It, like, it, but it's not yeah. as bad as Tyson Douglas. That was no, just bizarre. No, but but, but they're point, still very, still very muted. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Teddy, Teddy, you're one of the greatest trainers in the history of the sport. So we'll start with you. The next category is is trainer of the year. Teddy, you, I, I believe you probably you you were always in the running for this award. I'm sure you won it more than once. But um, I won it one time. The, well, that's a that's a that's a shame. That's a crime. That's a, that, we weren't voting. So, uh, who do you have for trainer of the year, two thousand twenty three? You know, I'm gonna probably go with something a little unexpected because I know Bo Mack is an easy pick. He he's had more than one fighter and all of them terrific, and he always has his guys ready. They're 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 always ready to, and I'm always impressed that they're ready to fight the right fight. You know, the, they always have the right fight plan. And, um, but I think there's a guy that's off the radar that just hasn't been getting the attention that he really deserves. Like, we forgot about him. And the fighter, when I mention him, his name, you're going to say, well, his the fighter that he trained sure gets the attention. He's going to get awards today. But it's in a way his father. You know, mm. he, how can you not consider him 
I mean, really, think about it. How, I mean, he reminds me a little bit of Lomachenko's father, you know, like a more of a studious guy, a very disciplined guy, you know, uh, along the lines. I'm not saying of a professor, but uh, just just very direct guy, very buttoned up guy. And um, this is a guy that, you know, he's, he, his son obviously is, is pound for pound, I think, the best fight. Him and Crawford, I think you could interchange either one of them. A uh, special guy, and the father's a special guy. He's uh he's a marathoner. He he's a guy that's run these crazy races where they run like a hundred seventy miles, and and he's been involved in those kind of tests of obviously stamina and will. And how could you not think that some of that has been uh, sort of passed on to his son in the attitudes that his son fights and the focus that his son fights? So. I know that he's only got the one fighter, and sometimes you can shy away a little bit that it, that they only have the one fighter. But that one fighter is so damn good, <laughs> and and he's accomplished so much, you know, winning titles so early, and in so many weight classes. Uh, in a way, his father. That's I, I can't say anything more. Can't can't go against that. I mean, what a year! You know, he beats Fulton, and we're going to talk about him a lot later. But he. Beats Fulton now he's undisputed at 122. I mean it was a it was a great year. Uh, Chris, uh, we'll start with you. I know you and Paulie have the same pick. Uh, Chris, I'll let you unveil that pick for Trainer of the Year 2023. Well, I do want to touch on something that, that Teddy was saying about uh, anyway's father, which is such a great pick. Listen, the brother can fight too, and yeah, he's he not as gifted. I'm glad as, you brought that up, Chris. You're right. He's not as gifted as Noya. He doesn't have that power. He's not. He's not the so same true. kind of guy. But he's still a very very good fighter. And, and that shows you, I think that that's important when you're talking about trainer of the year. Yeah, you can do it with one guy, but can you do it with two? Can you do it with three? Can you do it with more guys? And so I think that that's really important, which is going to bring me to the guy that I didn't pick, but was is someone that I want to talk about, Ben Davison. That He just had a big win with mm. Anthony Joshua this weekend. That's a good one, yeah. He's a young guy. Um, he's worked with a lot of fighters in the past, has done, has done worked miracles with some of these guys. I mean, he, he's a very, very astute young guy, and I think he's going to be around for a really long time. But when it comes to 2023, it, I, it's, I'm hard-pressed to not pick Bomac. You know, not only is he our guy and he's a friend of the show, I mean, he just had such a breakout year. Um, I mean, true. fantastic. The Crawford fight, you know, something that that I was speaking to him, for, you know, over years about that fight, asking about, you know, talking to him about what he – and he, was, he, he never changed his mind. He goes, we are whooping Spence's ass and stopping him. Watch. And he always said it. And I was like, all right, man, we'll see. We'll see. And sure enough, that's exactly what happened. That was really impressive. And then the Chris Eubank resurrection. That You add that to the mix. Not only do you have the guy that you brought up your entire career, which is which is an amazing feat for a coach, then you jump in on a guy who gets starched in the first time he fights, um, um, uh, what's his name? Um drawing a blank. Uh, uh, Beefy. Beefy Smith. And yeah. um, now they get the rematch. And... He undo he undoes some of the damage that was done in in, in previous uh, training camps, um, brings back the fundamentals, and he goes out there and puts on a fantastic performance and blasts and beats up Beefy. I mean, a, the guy, guy who knocked him out. Right. You know that's that's really impressive to be able to to, to change a guy up and and change the outcome of a fight that drastically. So not mm -hmm. only you know can you, is it obviously what he's done with Crawford, but is a, the fact that he was able to do in one camp make any kind of adjustment on a guy's tough. Yeah. And he made an adjustment to get, uh, you know, in a fight where a guy was literally got starched the fight before and, and, and was always a good, had a good chin. So I think that's a, and he that's a really impressive thing to do. one of the top do. prospects out there too, with that Keyshawn uh, yeah. Davis. So yep. you know, it, it's hard not to pick him. I'll be honest with you. That's why I started when I went into, uh, in a way, with saying that, that you, you can't begrudge Bomack getting it, but... To me, a guy that goes off the radar, like in a way, his father, because he really has been off the radar. And I'm glad you brought up the point that his brother is also pretty damn good too. So, but all all of these, Davidson was a great mention too, as a honorable mention because he'll definitely be getting it in years to come oh, yeah. because he's he, he's been making an impact on these fighters. And I think not just from a technical standpoint, but I think from a mental standpoint where he's becoming a guy that kind of helps their heads yeah. um, a little bit. 
And Paulie, before we get to you, Paulie, I just want to mention Shingo. Shingo Inui is, is the monster's father's name, and he was a boxer himself. Yeah, I was so gonna say that you took the word right. Shingo, out. <laughs> I seem to do it. Yeah, Shingo Shingo Inui. So Paulie, go ahead. And the reason I know that is because uh, Bloodsport was one of my favorite movies, and uh. his son was Shingo. The, the Tanaka son that dies. I went to high school with a kid yeah. named Shingo. Yeah. He's on the wrestling team. He's a good athlete. So, but but yeah, you know what? Shingo could also be the running fighter of the year next year because I think the other the other son is going to fight for a world title soon, right? Uh, the, I think he's a mandatory for WBA title, right? Uh, he's so. he's at least close. I know that. Yeah, Noah is brother. Right? So maybe if he gets uh if he picks up a world title and Noah keeps doing what he does. You know, uh, it, it puts him in the at the forefront for the uh, trainer of the year. Uh, right now, again, I think Bo Mack is a, is a difficult one to beat because it's also the fight that people were also in, anticipating for such a long time. And he uh, and I, I'm I'll be with Chris on this one too. In that, I remember Bo telling me years ago because I was one of the ones picking Spence to win the fight, and, he, Bo, and Bo was telling me years ago, "Man, I'm telling you, we're gonna beat him easily. We're gonna beat this mm -hmm. guy easily. You're gonna see." And uh, you know, you think it's just bluster, you think it's what well, it's just you know just people being partisan to their side but um when this fight finally happened you know it was the, the dominant uh fashion that Crawford was able to win the fight so you've got to also you know give uh the the credit to the flowers as you guys like to say to a guy like Bo Mack who has sort of been with with Terrence all his all his boxing life and and has created this amazing fighter that has really uh sort of blossomed in, into into what he is now and has, has blossomed into the year that he had in 2023 and then of course you add like Teddy said, the fact that he trains Keyshawn, who's one of the better prospects in boxing, the Chris Eubank uh, rematch over over Liam Smith. Where I was, I was in Manchester for that rematch. A lot of people were picking Liam and just thinking that uh, he was in Eubank's head, and that's it, you know. And then Eubank not only won the fight, but he won it in dominant fashion. So it's hard to take away from him. I, I think Ben Davidson is a great mention as well. I think Davidson is one of the best trainers in boxing right now, one of the best young trainers, and I think he's going to be around for a while. He's he's a terrific strategist, uh, um, mindset guy. I, I think he's a terrific, terrific trainer, and he's grown on me a lot. I also want to mention uh, uh, David Benavidez's father, uh, mm -hmm. Jose, as well. You know, uh, you, you know, you got to mention Ho Jose as you well. To. But he's in there. He's in there too. So you know, you've got a a, a good solid cast of candidates. I think for for the trainer of the year, but I think Bomac, it's really, it's been his year. You know, it's, 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 it's hard to take away from Bomac and, and what he's done. And, and, and then if you, you even wanted to add an, a little extra one, he managed to navigate his way through, through the, through a, a, a guaranteed jail sentence in England. And got that <laughs> he sure one, did. Got that one out of the way too. So another Maybe comeback another, of the year, another, another W for Bomac in 2023. So um, yeah, I think, uh, put up wins this guy, he puts up wins year, all the way through. Nothing beats this guy. No, and you know no. what, too, with him, we've talked to him and he's got like like you, Teddy, he's got that love and that passion, drive, yeah. determination. Like he really loves what he does. And it's it's good to see him getting. And, and, that, and that's a great point. That's a great point, because you know what? That's another thing that doesn't get mentioned sometimes when it comes to accolades. and training. This guy will take his car full of a band full of kids, full of full of prospects and just drive all the way to Florida to our pro box. Uh, uh, to our pro box uh, headquarters and just be training there with a bunch of kids and with a bunch of his guys, you know, for sparring and whatnot. From Nebraska, bro. From Nebraska. He did, he did that several he, times this yeah, year. He did. You know In I mean? a year so that he, he was as busy as he was. It's a labor of love for him. Yeah. So he's yes. never too... So you see him in the ring with the best pound for pound fighter in the world and then you'll also see him just driving cross country with a van full of young prospects or even teenagers, just getting them ready to, to throw down just with wraps, gauze and every, all the equipment, duffel bags. I mean, he's top to bottom. I mean, he's a pa He's a passionate guy about the sport, passionate about people, really good hearted guy. But let me tell you, yeah. uh, don't, uh, don't let that, that gun charge fool you, man. Bo is a, is a, is one of the nicest people you will meet, man. You know what I mean? I think one of the other names you have to draw in there in this context so, and what you were touching on, other guys out there, yeah, and not for this year maybe, but definitely has put his his hat in the ring, uh, so to speak. Is Andy Lee, the former world champion? Yeah, you know, yeah. Really, look at the That's job. A good he point. Did just with the big upset over Wilder, you know, with Joe Parker, but he also has a prospect in Patty Donovan, a mm -hmm. Irish kid in Ireland, who I think he's about twelve and all. Um, yeah. Real, really good and, prospect. And Teddy, he's been in the corner with Tyson Fury as well, right? He's been, yeah. yes, yeah. yeah. He's sort yeah. of been, he's been sort of apprenticing kind of a, a, under some really good tutelage. That's, he's that's, sort of breaking out himself. Cool. I agree, man. Ex, ex world champion and and uh, uh, one of the better trainers in the sport.
Hey, there's no curse to this, is there? Because last year, Derek James was trainer of the year. Didn't have such a great year in 2023. So hopefully there's no no curse to becoming trainer of the year because Derek um Derek had some struggles. But Bomac, Bomac is two of the three. He's your choice for trainer of the year. Some great trainers. Um, Let's move on. And Paulie, we'll start with you. Prospect of the year for 2023. We've seen a lot of new names in the sport, new fighters. And we're always look, looking for that next star, that next champion. Who do you have? as your prospect of the year for 2023. We interviewed him, but I forgot his name. <laughs> Ernesto Honestly, Mercado. Ernesto Honestly, Mercado. Really? Yeah, I'm glad, I'm they glad call I'm not him the only Tito. one. They call him Tito. It was Ernesto Mercado, 140 pounder. And we did yeah. interview him. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, all right, so my, my, my prospect of the year is Ernesto Mercado. You know, he grew on me when we uh, interviewed him uh, for the uh, show. Uh, we had him on, um, on one of our shows here at Pro Box, and we're talking about him, and I just like the, the his kid's demeanor, his his maturity, his poise, his his uh, confidence. Um, he's gotten a, a sort of he's been sort of below the radar because people haven't uh, he hasn't been signed by the major major promoter, but he he's definitely got some money behind them. There's definitely people behind them because even if he hasn't signed with a major promoter, he's been able to get some pretty expensive uh, opponents in the ring, right? I mean, he he knocked off the guy he knocked off the guy that beat. Um, that beat what's his name, uh, uh, Burchelt, right? He, he he knocked off that guy, and then he had another Taylor, key yeah. Win. yeah, and then he had another key win. Right, you guys, remind me, uh, Henry Lundy, uh, yeah, Hank Lundy, oh, Hank, yeah, Hank Lundy, who, who was never an easy out for anyone. Right. You know what I'm also, Jason Velez, <laughs> another guy who's tough. So he's been like he's been sort of below the radar because he's not signed with the big promoter, but he had a major rivalry, Davis, with Keyshawn Davis. He talked about in the amateurs. He talks about that he would beat him. And not only would he beat Keyshawn Davis, he would beat Keyshawn Davis easily, according to him, you know? And he feels and if you look at his record, it's it's a very good puncher. Good if you look at him on video, very good boxing style, uh puncher, puncher, bunch boxer puncher. He is he is I think he's gonna develop into something that people he's kinda gonna, gonna kinda burst on the scene. But if you're already kind of in the know like we were and we got we picked him up in in, in uh, uh on our show and then started talking to him. And, and it really opened my eyes to this kid. You know, I think this kid is gonna be very, very dangerous and is gonna be one to keep an eye on. Again, because he's not with a major promoter, because sometimes he may fall below the radar. But for me, I'm telling you, this kid is a prospect to watch. And for me, it's one of the ones to watch. Yeah, he's 13 and 0, 12 knockouts, 140 pounder too, 22 years old, and he's in the best division in boxing right now. Chris Algeri, prospect of the year 2023. I got my guy Xander Zayas. And when you when you look at prospect of the year, what are you looking at, right? You look at a future world champion, you look at a future star. And the kid has star power from his charisma, his charisma, his personality, but also he's Puerto Rican. We need a Puerto Rican star in this sport. We always need one. We need one. We need guys to sell out the garden. Xander can be that guy. He's already been on a bunch of those undercards. Um, I've called a bunch of his fights for, for top rank as he's been coming up, watching his progression. He's 21 years old, and he's starting to fight stiffer and stiffer competition. And there were points where I saw him fight some guys, and I was like, you know what? This is probably a little too soon. He went. He ended up going the distance. Dominant, but still. You, everyone is expecting a KO, and he didn't get it. But recently, he's blasting guys out. He's in there and he is he is dominant. He just scored a brilliant body shot knockout on a, on a tough guy with a big punch in his last fight. So I think he's really coming to his man strength. Um, you see him. I, I it's funny. I've, I've I've known him for years. I actually sparred him a couple of years ago. I call him the incredible growing man because every time I see him, he's bigger. But he still he still he still stays at the weight class at one fifty four. <laughs> he's getting taller, wider. I think he's growing into himself, and I think that physicality is really going to show in these next couple of years as he gets what we call that man strength. Because I mean. 21, that's crazy to be fighting yeah. in these kinds of fights. And another thing I'm going to touch on, just because I, I, I'm i around him personally, he trains really hard. The discipline is there. He refuses to have a girlfriend. He doesn't go out. He's like, I am dedicated to this sport. My father said, I can't have a girlfriend. I can't do this. I can't do that. I have to train. I love that. I love that. Especially in this generation of kids coming up, we don't see that much. So for, for, for the fact, the sheer fact that he's as disciplined as he is, He's as charismatic, good-looking, great personality as like he is, and then he has a Puerto Rican fan base behind him. Plus, he speaks Spanish. A lot of Puerto Rican fighters these days don't. He does. I think he's going to be uh, able to touch a lot of the fan base in these next couple of years. So for me, he's my prospect of the year, not just because he's my friend, but I do think he he has everything it takes to be uh, a superstar. Hey, Teddy, before you give your pick, Chris was talking about how Xander uh, loves to train. You as a awesome. trainer – if anyone hasn't read your book, you had some fighters that didn't always love to train. 
Teddy, what's it like when you have a guy that has all that talent and, and loves being in the gym and loves to learn? It's got to make your job easier. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's what you want, obviously. Um, you know, you that old saying, you could lead a horse to the water, you can't make them drink it. You know, I mean, it comes to play in everything in life. You You have, I mean, there's so many ingredients that go into being a great fighter, you know, obviously talent, you know, mental strength, being able to, you know, be calm in an uncalm environment, you know, discipline, all of those things. But you might as well start with the desire to be a great fighter. <laughs> That's a pretty damn good place to start. Yeah. You know, I, I remember one time, and I used this analogy for, for the question you just said in the same way. I remember years ago, I think it was a writer from Sports Illustrated, somebody, and they were doing a a piece on infighting. How, what's it take to be a great inside fighter? Kind of interesting. So they came to me to do this story. They said, oh, Teddy, what's it take to be a great inside fighter? Uh, well, you know, you got you to gotta make sure that you always have just enough space, not too much to lose the defense, but at the same time, just enough where you don't lose the offense, the flow, where the flow can continue, um, where you don't get smothered, you don't get grabbed. Uh, you got to move your feet a little bit when it's necessary. Again, just enough where it's not too much, then you leave yourself open, just enough to allow the offensive flow to continue. You have to keep your hands in the right position. You got to rotate your shoulders to create power and to create room instead of pulling your hands back and giving up defense. You know, oh, you can't put your hands behind them. You got to keep them in front of you. All of that went through the whole thing. And the guy was loving it. He was like, oh, man, this is great. I said, yeah, but there's really only one thing at the end that matters. And <laughs> and he, <laughs> he goes, what's that, Ted? I said, um, you got you got to want to be an inside fighter. <laughs> <laughs> and the guy was like, oh, yeah, I guess that kind of important. And it's the same thing what you just asked me. You know, to be a great fighter, you got to want to be a great fighter. You got to, you know, you got to want to put the time in and the, the work and the pain and be willing to do all that. But um, getting to my prospect of the year, I'm going to go and and I want to say hello to Sean. I see Sean just came in. Hello, Sean. How are you? It's great. Yeah, Happy New Year and everything. And uh, Merry Christmas, all that. But yeah, but I would, prospect of the year, there's, I love what Chris just said about Zayas because the thing that struck me when I saw him was his body. I mean, the guy, the guy's got a great body. I mean, he's, he's, he's tall. He's long. Uh, he's got physicality to him. He's big. I don't know how he's going to stay that weight class. He's got the kind of body that the skeleton that you can get bigger. You can go into many other weight classes, uh, you know, without having a problem at all. Uh, that he will grow into those. So that was one of the things that struck me. The other thing is his technique's good, you know, and he goes to the body, and he, I love the way he sets up the body, what Chris was touching on. He goes to the head, and then bang, he goes, kind of like a Mickey Ward used to have that really, he was really had it down, where he touch up top, and then real quick, grab you downstairs, where you, your arm moved just enough, just enough to give an opening to the liver. Uh, I love the way he did that, upstairs, downstairs, but, man, the guy throws a lot of punches. That was what impressed me about Zayas, Chris, is that he threw so many punches, yet he didn't give up defense for his offense. He still was able to maintain proper defense even while he was throwing all those punches. So you picked a good guy there. I'm, there's so many of them. I'm going to go almost with an honorable mention. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mention a guy named Andy Cruz. I... He's only 2-0, and oh, but he's a gold medalist. He won the Pan Ams. He, I mean, he's one of these crazy uh, amateur fighters that has won everything. And his first pro fight, first and second, was a 10-rounder. Because when you have that many fights at that level, you can do it. And he's, for me, he's on the fast track of a, do the same thing that Lomachenko, Rigadial, uh, you know, the Cuban fighter that, that that's out there now, the... Um, the light heavyweight, what's his name? Morrell. Um, Morrell. Morrell. Yeah. Morrell, David Morrell. Yeah, he's on that fast track to do the incredible, which is to win a title after maybe three, four fights. 
and because of his amateur pedigree and obviously because of his mind and because of, you know, just obviously the way he's been brought up and in this industry, uh, he he's definitely a guy that that struck me. Like, how can you not mention this guy fighting 10 rounders after two fights? And again, I think he's going to do what those guys did. I think he's going to wind up winning a world title very young. But my prospect of the year, you got to go with one guy. I'm in a candy store here. It's not easy. Um, it really is. <laughs> but I'm going to go with a guy, Nate, Nadri Lopez. Mm. Uh, yeah. Nine and oh, eight now. I only saw it because you guys made me see. Robox and, TV's and Najee Lopez. We looked at some fights, and I got to be honest. We, we we pride ourselves here. I said we're an honest group. <laughs> I think we really are. And um, as individuals, as well as as a group, it matters to us to have full transparency. And I had no clue that you guys really put on competitive fights. My God. the I, That matchmaker should be the matchmaker for all of boxing. Really should. I'm really. But you have developed some really good prospects. And when I watched this Najee Lopez, I was like, this guy's a real prospect. He's nine and all with eight knockouts. He he got tested in a fight that I watched him. Uh he got tested with a guy who didn't have a good record, a great record at least, you know, a winning record, but not a great record. He had a few losses. But one of those guys that know how to fight and can punch. And he stunned him a little bit. He behaved like a fighter. So he passed that test, that litmus test for me. He behaved like a fighter. He had the right mindset. Uh, he came right back. He handled it. And he took him apart. And he did it with good technique. He did it with with everything you would want a prospect to do it with. And he showed me that he could fight on the outside. And then he went on the inside. And... He went on the inside, even though he could handle it on the outside, because he knew that he wanted to get rid of this guy because he could punch. He wasn't afraid to go into the eye of the storm. So he went inside because he wanted to get rid of this guy because he knew the guy was dangerous. So he went in in a responsible way, obviously, but in a way where a fighter who has that kind of innate intelligence knew that he'd be better off in than out. And he went inside, and man, the way he put short punches, it was like Joe Lewis. He was putting together these little short punches on the inside, and he just broke the guy down. I forget the name of the opponent, and, and he wound up stopping him. So I was, obviously, I was very, I was just very impressed with everything about him. As I said, he got tested in the fight. Uh, he showed that mental toughness. Uh, he's, he's my guy. He's my guy. Kevin, wow. I'm gonna add to you. I'm gonna add to you what you're saying or just piggyback off of it. The yeah. guy was Wheeler, and yeah, he didn't have a great record. He Wheeler, was, Wheeler. But Wheeler had had come off of a controversial loss against Ronald Gavril, who as we know, Ronald Gavril has probably given David Benavides the toughest fight of his professional boxing career yeah, this point, Definitely. You know? And Wheeler had basically, for by all intents and purposes, most people thought he'd won the fight against Gavril. So he was a uh, one of these spoiler types. He was a really one of these spoiler types, and you could see when he fought Najee. And he was better than what his record was. And he's one of these guys that probably people stay away from. But Najee not only stayed away from him, Najee fought him uh, and, and then ended up taking it to him in a, in, a, uh, in, a, in a fight that, you know, kind of showed a lot of the qualities that you were mentioning about Najee. And Najee is a, 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 certainly a guy we enjoy having uh, having a pro box. We get to see his development and uh, along with a couple, a couple of the other prospects we've had, the Valle brothers and Val Saint. I think they're all Val Saint. I think uh, that's one of the, uh, one of the pride, one of the jewels, of uh, of pro box is not just the competitive fights and the fun fights that uh, for the fan base, but also we really pride ourselves in the, the handful of prospects we have here at the at the uh, network. No, you really do. I mean, it, it's real. I saw it. I and listen again. I just I, I say what I see and what I feel. Uh, when I saw it, I was like, you know what? These guys haven't been BS. You know, like because you know sometimes you know you're selling your product, right? And you know it's it's a natural thing. And um, you know some. Guys do it a little more than others, and I think a little too much. But um, and but I'm watching these fights, and I'm saying, wow, they ain't kidding. They they put on real fights, and they're actually developing real fighters, real prospects. Yeah. Uh, so I always say, being being a being a pro box uh, prospect is is listen, it's a great platform to have, but man, it's not an easy job. Because you're going to be in tough every time. All these guys are. I call it meat grinder. Being on Pro Box TV air is, is a meat grinder. And the right. guys who come back time and time again, I'm always impressed with. But the prospects, 
they have no chance. <laughs> they have no they they have no way to go but up. They every no, fight's no, gonna true. be tough. They, they have they to get, get better. Tested. And listen, when they don't perform, they get it from everybody. So it's not a, it's not an easy place to be. It's not an envious place to be either. It, again, a great platform, but it, it's gonna be a tough road for these kids. You know, no, this I is perfect say, too. You know, one of the things I would always say is that you know, there's an old there was an old commercial years ago. I think it was like uh Fram oil filter, where the guy says, pay me now or pay me later. You know, you pay now for this $3 oil filter, or later you can pay me $8,000 for a new engine because you didn't get the oil filter. <laughs> and I I think of that all the time with these prospects coming up where they think they're being given favors, right? Where you're, you're fighting just cannon fodder. Let's be honest. They're, they're fighting guys. They, really, what are they getting out of it? These are kids with 200 amateur fights. What are they getting out of fighting these guys that shouldn't even be in a ring? But they're building a record. Everyone goes that path to a certain extent. Some get off it a little sooner. Some stay on it a little, little long. But I would always say some of them, when they finally get to that place where they're truly going to be, because that place is coming. <laughs> it's coming. Mm -hmm. I mean, sooner or later, it's coming. And when they finally get to the place, the ones that really never took, and I say it this way, never were forced to take a deep breath in a fight, physically or mentally, all of a sudden they get in that, that moment. That moment comes. They're not ready for it. They're, and you see it. I see it. I watch it. I say, oh, this guy, he's, just, he's just not ready. And they're fighting a guy with three losses, whatever, but a guy that has been fired, to, a guy that's become a real fighter, a real fighter, a real pro. And he ain't going to beat himself. He ain't going to lay down for you. He's a solid guy. And all of a sudden you see it. And, and you're like, this guy was not prepared for this moment. And he should have been. So, I, and I say it. I say a lot of times I'll go after the promoters. You know, I just say, hey, yeah. Are they really doing them a favor by giving them that many to build up their record when they should get thrown in one or two to get ready for when that moment does come? And to to all of our point, this Najee, he's ready. He, he'll be ready. Yeah. That's one thing I can guarantee from my experience. When his chance comes, he'll be ready. And Teddy, I didn't know what your pick was going to be, and, and that was going to be a point for me to say, hey, we've got some great prospects here at Pro by CB, but you just touched on Najee Lopez, who is, is a shining star at Pro oh, Box yeah. TV. And one other guy I would just throw out there again, I'm, I'm in a candy store. I'm sorry. I'm grabbing all kinds of... Uh, but <laughs> the, uh, the, the, the Irish kid, Patty Donovan, I mentioned him earlier, Andy Lee, um, who I, one of these days will also be up there for train of the year, probably. But... Um, Patty Donovan is 12 and 0. He was a real good amateur. Uh, he's fighting out of Ireland. Ireland has a renaissance going on with boxing over there, where where they really they're really bringing you know they're bringing great crowds. You know uh, they have great Irish fans over there, and and it's coming back. Boxing's come back really strong in Ireland. And Patty Donovan out of definitely out of all the Irish prospects, and there's a few of them. He I think he's the best one. As we continue our best of 2023, Paulie had to step out, but look who we have to replace him. What a replacement. Showtime, Sean Porter. Look at the hat. He's got the Pro Box TV hat. He has stepped in for Paulie. And by the way, Sean, congratulations. Your wife had your third son. Three, yeah. three bouncing boys in the family. And that was a great, I'm sure that was the best Christmas present you've ever gotten. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, actually, it was the best Christmas present. Um, came just a, a few days before Christmas, but um, everybody's healthy, everybody's happy, and that's all I want in life. Thank yeah, you. and listen, congratulations. We we are we are glad that you joined us, and I had a feeling you were going to pop in because you knew <laughs> this is the best of 2023. I knew that Showtime Sean was going to jump in, but the well, next category that one of those three sons might we might be talking about down the road a few years from now as a prospect of the year. 15, 20 years from now, <laughs> we, we will see. We will see. That's yep. three. That good genes right there. So you yeah. never you never know. Whatever they decide to do, I'm sure they're going to be successful. Absolutely. Awesome. Thank you guys. So um the, the next um the next category, Chris, I want to start with you. It's upset of the year. And the reason why I want to start with you is because our own Chris Algieri in 2014, he had the upset of the year when he beat Ruslan Provodnikov to become 140 pound champion of the world. A great fight. If you haven't seen it, you better get on YouTube and watch that fight right now. But Chris, you had the upset of the year 2014. 
Who's your upset of the year for 2023? Well, I'm going to I'm going to take it back to what Teddy was talking about earlier uh, with the Ramirez Espinosa fight and how Espinosa was a man who was possessed because that's how I felt on the night when I fought Ruslan Bavankov got my upset of the year. I hmm. was not leaving that ring without that belt. And that's what Espinosa did that night with Rubisi Ramirez. And I hold high Rubisi Ramirez very highly. I think he is excellent. I really like what he's been doing lately. He's been getting better every time out. So going into that fight, I mean, everyone's riding R Ramirez so highly, Rubisi, and no one really knows much about Espinosa. Yeah, he's a six foot one, 126 pounder with good power and good knockouts. Cool. Look past the numbers. He hadn't fought anybody. He hadn't fought anyone anywhere near Rubisi Ramirez level. Um, so it was kind of expected that Rubisi was going to go out there and do Rubisi things. And early on, it kind of was, it was, it was early on. It was Espinosa coming out and being a six foot one, one twenty six pounder, very difficult guy to deal with. Uh, Rubisi was having trouble, but then he finds something. He catches him with, uh, I think it was a, was it a right hook or yeah, I think it was a right hook. Drops him badly, really yeah, badly. Right hook. awkwardly over his foot. And uh, later in hindsight, finding out that he actually broke bones in his foot during the fight which is another testament to what you said, Teddy, a man possessed. He wasn't going to let pain. He wasn't going to let punches. He wasn't going to let power. He wasn't going to let skill. wasn't going to let experience out, outdo him that night. I mean, he was getting hit with big shots. He was getting rocked over and over again. But listen, he came on even stronger as the fight wore on. That was my question. You got your six for one, you're 126. How are you going to be in late rounds? <laughs> we always, you know, a guy like Tommy Hearns had that kind of body, those long legs, that good power. The endurance wasn't always there. The, mm -hmm. the, the punch resistance wasn't always there. The legs would mm -hmm. fail guys like that. And Espinosa, they didn't. He got stronger. Yeah. And that 12th round, like you said, he put a punctuation, he put an exclamation point. He has a Urbisi Ramirez, who is very tough in his own right. Puts him down with body shots. I mean, goes catches him to the lever. You see him, you see him win, wince in pain, and the kid Espinosa went for it. And almost stopped him in the 12th round. I had him winning the fight anyway. But that was just like, all right, there's no way you can take it away from this kid, which a lot of times when there is upsets and upset minded people and people aren't expecting a guy to go out there and do what they do. Sometimes yeah. guys get robbed. Espinosa did not get robbed. So for me, mm -hmm. that's my fight of the year. Yeah, it's a great story. We interviewed him on Pro, on uh, Pro Box TV Espanol, um, and he was doing his interview from Disneyland. So it was like a storybook. <laughs> It was like a storybook. What and are you going to do now, champ? <laughs> it, yeah, it was, it was really a, a, a cool moment. So, Sean, I'll save you for last, but Teddy, you're upset of the year because that the fight that Chris talked about, that was your fight of the year. So what's yeah. your upset of the year? It, you know, it, it goes either way. That's uh, it was yeah. a great pick by Chris because it, it was an upset of the year candidate and it was a fight of the year. And a lot of times, like I said earlier, when I was talking about the uh, fight of the year with Espinosa, when you have a big upset, it can turn out to be the, you know, a great fight. And this turned out to be a great fight. And part of his expectation, Chris did a great job of saying, you know, you, you got in, in that fight, you didn't, you have a gold medalist um, who's from the Olympics, Cuban gold medalist. And, um, you know, he drops him in the fourth round after Espinosa had a great beginning uh, to the fight, but then when Ramirez caught up to him in the fourth, you figure, okay, now you know it's going the way that it's gonna go. That he caught up to him, he got his distance with the taller guy. He got him to fight in the geography he needed him to, and it's just a matter of time. And then he went and hurt him again in the seventh. So uh, great pick for definitely for fight of the year, uh, upset of the year, I should say. Um, I'm gonna go off. I'm gonna go off the reservation. Um, before I do, I'm gonna one guy that comes <laughs> to mind is you have to think about Joseph Parker over Wilder. Mm. Uh, you know, pulling off that upset where everybody over in uh, Saudi Arabia, everyone figured, you know, Wilder's gonna win, probably win by knockout. And what does Parker do? He um, he goes and he he breaks down. He breaks down Wilder, uh, and he and he just fights. He fights perfectly all night. You know, he he puts enough pressure on him to win the fight, but at the same time is also defensive conscious enough to not get caught with that Thor's hammer that that you know that Wilder has. Uh, he, he fought a 
cautiously aggressive fight, really, really buttoned up all night long. And again, a lot of times you'll fight a fight with a dangerous guy like Wilder, and you'll fight the right defensive fight, but you won't find a way to create enough offense to win the fight. He did both. He did both. Him and his trainer, Andy Lee, came up with a perfect right fight plan to do both. Um, so he's definitely in the running. But again, I'm going to go way off the reservation. And I'm going to pick a guy who actually didn't win, but he won. What the heck am I talking about? <laughs> I'm going to I'm gonna pit in Ganyu because mm -hmm. in Ganyu, that's a nobody, good Nobody. <laughs> no, he, he lost the fight, but he won the night. And nobody, you talk about upset, it's got to have certain dimensions to it. You know, that Chris was talking about, breaking it down. It's got this dimension, that dimension. It had all those dimensions. And Ganyu, no chance to win the fight. It's supposed mm. to be just there, you know, uh, to get paid, right? And an attraction for the Saudis to, you know, bring out that they're going to be, you know, trying to take over boxing. And you had Riyadh season there uh, in that part of Saudi. And what does he do? He, he obviously didn't read the script. He goes <laughs> in there and he drops. He, first of all, he looked so much better than anyone thought he would. And and his trainer almost uh, Dewey, what's his name? Dewey Cooper. He should almost get a little consideration for trainer of the year mm. just for the job he did <laughs> on that one night. It was incredible. He so so many parts of what you need to have the upset of the year. He he he's a guy that never fought a pro fight. And he looks like a pro fighter. So that's one thing. That's an upset. He looks like a fighter. Wow, that's an upset. <laughs> and and then he goes in there and he drops. He goes and drops the heavyweight champ of the world, Tyson Fury. That's an upset. Mm -hmm. And then he goes and hurts him again in the eighth round. Look, no doubt I thought Fury won the fight. But again, Nganyu won the crowd. And actually had people think, just won the crowd, but he won the night. And actually had people thinking, that he won the fight. And then people thinking, okay, you could actually put him in with a top 10 fighter now, whether it's a water or pick, choose your pick. Uh, he could actually be put in with one of those fights where before you would have said it's blasphemous. You would have said, how can you even talk the way you're, you're ridiculous? Like how much eggnog were you drinking to even, <laughs> to, to yeah. even talk that way? But now it's not ridiculous. Now you could actually wrap your head around the possibility that he could fit in with another top heavyweight fighter. I'm not saying he would have the same performance. Uh, the the circumstances would be a little different, but you could make that argument. And the reason you can is because of the performance that Ganyu put on that night with the heavyweight champ of the world. Again, he drops him. He looks great. He looks like a fighter. You never would have believed this was his first pro fight. He technically buttoned up, and and he he takes whatever he has to take, and and then, you know, he he winds up like I said. He I thought he won the two rounds. I thought he won was the third with the knockdown, and then the eighth where he had a really good round. And look, there was a lot of rounds where there wasn't a lot going on. It wasn't a scintillating fight. But when you talk about upset of the year, mm. I, I tell you, I was sitting ringside in Saudi, and I I was shocked. I was shocked. So yeah. that's my upset of the year. That's a, Even though he that's didn't a get great one. That's a great one. I would have never thought of that one. When Teddy said he had something off the reservation, it's I poetic. figured it would be a good one. It's poetic. It, very poetic. Very poetic. <laughs> wow. So Sean Porter, Showtime Sean. Yeah. How about you? What's your upset of the year? Well, I want to go back to what Chris, uh, the fight that he spoke on. Um, we did uh, Best Of on the Portaway podcast, and I completely forgot about... Uh, this fight with Espinosa and uh, and Ramirez, that bar none was the upset of the year. And I want to salute um, Espinosa for, listen, and you guys, so now I, you guys got to understand that, that this is not just an excuse. I, my wife was pregnant. So when, <laughs> when the wife is pregnant, the man has all of these other, like, whatever. We and get I it. mean, listen. The way Espinosa finished that fight literally brought tears to my eyes. Mm. I thought that was just amazing to see him do it and put it down the way that he did. 
and really went for it in the 12th round from the beginning of the round to the end of the round. Everybody waits on that 10 second clap. Everybody's waiting on the last 30 seconds to turn it on. And I mean, I thought he was winning the fight. I thought that he, he I didn't really think he needed the 12. And for him to go for it the way that he did, man, like literally brought tears to my eyes. And that I think is a fight that anybody can watch any day and they'd be entertained. That one flies under the radar because of the names, because of the weight class. Of course, I was gonna go with the obvious uh, most recent Deontay Wilder and Joseph Parker. I think that that clear, clear cut that that is an upset. But to me, I think the upset of the year has to be Terrence Crawford beating Errol Spence Jr. the way that he beat him. I think that mm. going into the ring, we all thought it was 50 uh, 50. A lot of people saying Errol, a lot of people saying Terrence, but it was more so just a bias. Who you, who do you like? If you really looked at the, the, the fundamentals and the ABCs of the fight, you say, this is literally 50 50. Whoever has their best night is going to win this fight. And not only did Terrence Crawford have his best night, he had the best night of any fighter in this world uh, outside of Nganu, uh in, in, in the boxing ring this year. I just thought the way he put it down was masterful. And when you think that this was 50-50, the way that Terrence Crawford performed and lights out after the first round, that's upset of the year simply because when you thought it was 50-50, it became so one-sided, it was almost unreal. And that just is a testament to the, the type of athlete the type of fighter, the type of person, mentally, emotionally, physically, that uh, that that Terrence Crawford is, and um, it it was a small surprise for me to see him continue to do it the way that he had done it. But I'm on record for saying after I fought Terrence Crawford, he was the best fighter I've ever been in the ring with, amateur or pro. I was also on record for saying, hey, the styles that this, the way these guys fight, one guy could move into the other guy's rhythm. And that's exactly what, what Terrence laureled um, Arrow in. He allowed Arrow to get on that steamroll in the first round. And then in the second round, he just started walking him into everything. Masterful performance. Also upset of the year for me. Wow. Chris, you know, when we started this uh, show, Sean, you weren't on. But Chris, you said this is probably the best year of your life for boxing. And just all these fights and upsets and, and, and knockout. You know, we haven't gotten a knockout yet. But what he, it's been, it really, Chris, it's really been a special year. Yeah, for I mean, for a lot of reasons. One, I mean, like you just said, just based on, on um, you know what, what's been happening in the sport, we're getting fights we couldn't get. Last year sucked. I'm gonna be. I'm just. I'm. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go on record. <laughs> Last year sucked. We started out really good for the first six months, and then every big fight fell through. The heavyweights weren't active. With the big fights weren't being made. We were. They were dangling the carrot of of uh, Spence and Crawford. That fight wouldn't happen last year. Then this year, we get we all the stuff is happening. The heavyweights are finally back, although they they finally. started late. Yeah. Um. And we had a great year with some great matchups. We saw pound for pound people emerge. Um. Yeah. No. This has been such a good year. Also, this is pro box coming to the main mainstream. That's another massive aspect uh, of this year being such a good year, and and it bodes well for the future. And um, yeah, I'm just uh, I I love this year for us, man. For for not even for for, for pro box for boxing. This year has been, yeah. been been a great year for the sport. Um, boxing is alive and well. Go ahead, Let John. me say this real quick. Yeah, I I don't even re really remember what last year it looked like. So that <laughs> but to hear Chris say last year sucked, it's funny because when I boxed, each camp somehow some way was better than the previous camp. And I just think that it would be fantastic if next year we're able to say last year, <laughs> last year. Yeah. Then, then that and means 2024 is going to yeah, be amazing. If we can make yeah. this year suck, then yeah, next year's got to be something special. Yeah. So just, I think the main thing is for boxing to just recognize, I'm talking to boxing right now, recognize what you have done and capitalize on it. Keep building on it. Don't digress. And, and, and I just think that boxing has its lows and it has its ups and its downs. It's a roller coaster ride, and that's why people have a hard time hanging on to boxing. Yeah, yeah, and and here, here, and let's hope that 2024 is great. January 17th is the first Pro Box Wednesday TV Wednesday Night Fight Series, so that kicks off. Archer Betterbeev is finally in action against Callum Smith in January, so we've got some good ones in January. But today, we're talking about the best of 2023. Sean, next category is Knockout of the Year. Been a lot of great knockouts in 2023. What's your top pick? I'm going with Naoa Ingue versus Marlon uh, Tapales. Hmm. 
And listen, mm. and this is and I and I had to explain this. The the hellacious knockouts are cool. They're 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 crazy to see. It's amazing. That's the cap. That's the that's the exclamation point for the guy who gets the knockout. List goes on. The three fights that come that came to my mind when I saw this fight in my fight with uh, Keith Thurman, my fight with Errol Spence Jr., and my fight with believe it or not, my fight with Andre Bertle. Especially with Bertle, I was extremely exhausted. And when that fight finally ended, I just I was like, I'm so glad that this fight is is over. The fight with Keith Thurman, when the fight was over, I, that last bell was like, thank God, <laughs> this is over. And I and I can remember, like, in as soon as that bell rang, it was like, I knew we did something great. And my fight with Earl Spence Jr., as soon as that last bell rang, it was like, all right, I'm out. I made it through. It's just some fights are like that. When I saw Marlon go down on one knee, mm -hmm. and then he went down on the second knee, completely done. And it's different. There's a difference between being done that way and being done on the stool and you having the no mas situation and all these other things. Anyway, literally made to pilots go down on one knee and then on the second knee. And he literally, and from what I could, the body language said, I can't do this anymore. Okay. And I've been there before <laughs> on my feet. So I knew, I knew what I saw. And I say, yo, that was special. So to me, for any way to put on a performance the way that he did against a guy who was completely game and ready for that fight and render him helpless at the end of that fight, I said, yo, I know that's not a complete knockout, but that's the stoppage of the year right there. It it For a fighter, it don't get any better than that. To have your X's and O's in place, round by round, beat somebody, have the best of them, and then just beat them to a point where they just can't continue in the middle of the ring and they go down on both knees. I said, wow, this guy anyway is special. That's my knockout of the year. Wow. And I'm loving those early morning, like two, three times a year, those early Tuesday mornings, you know, you see the monster on ESPN. I mean, it's a great, it's a great thing. They got to keep this going. They got to keep this going. So Teddy Atlas, knockout of the year. Are you going off the reservation? Like I, like now I don't know Teddy's picks. So Teddy, Teddy's got uh he's got like a pamphlet. Like yeah. he's just yeah, no, he's got notes. He, he does. He's, he's got, got a roll of decks of information. Is, he says, he says, what what aren't they gonna say? <laughs> exactly. He comes, he comes prepared. So I'm really like every time he talks, I'm I'm just waiting to hear what this pick is. So Teddy, knockout of the year, 2023. Well, Paulie had to leave, and um one of the ones that I believe he was picking in, and it definitely fits right in was Valenzuela knocking out Colbert in mm -hmm. that rematch. I mean, mm -hmm. really, that was reminiscent to me. I go back. That was reminiscent to Mike McCollum, the great middleweight champ who was called the body snatcher when he called Donald Curry. Donald Curry. Out. Because one of the no-nos in boxing, you know, both the champions here can tell you and Paulie can tell you, is you don't pull straight back in front of your opponent, especially if you have your hands down, your chin up. But you don't pull straight back. Go out to go out the side door. You know, get small, but you do not pull straight back at the wrong distance. You better make sure you're already out of range. Well, Colby got beat up in the fight anyway, but he pulled out at the wrong distance, and the southpaw Valenzuela stepped with him and nailed mm. him a beautiful right hook. And I think that was going to be Paulie's pick. So I, I just wanted to represent Paulie a little bit. Ah, uh, right. Yeah, because we're, we're a team here and we got to look out for each other. So <laughs> I, I think it was a great, great pick by him. Um, look, there's a few of them that you could go to. I am, I don't know if I'm going off the reservation, but I am going to very, I am going north of the weight scale uh, where. It's really small guys. It was the world light flyweight title and 108 pounds. And it was, for me, the K of the year. It was Adrian Curiel. He was the challenger. And here's the thing that makes it really special. He's not a puncher. The guy, I don't remember his record, but let's just say he had 20 fights. He had like four knockouts. Yep. He's not a puncher. But I always talk about it's not just the power of the punch. It's the delivery system. My God, 
the delivery system, he executed this punch to get a sensational knockout over the champion, Saventi Nanshinga. I got that out of the way. I pronounced yep, second that round. So, yep. And beautiful setup. He slips. What he does is he's an orthodox fighter, uh, Curio. And what he does is he slips his head over to the left just to bring the eyes of the champion with him over there. So he slips over there, and then as he slips over there, bang, he throws the right hand from the right side. Beautiful setup. I mean, you know, uh, David Copperfield couldn't do it better you know, with, with hand and trick and eye trickery. And you need trickery in the ring, especially with good fighters. You're not going to catch a good fighter with a cold punch. And he caught him, and again, he doesn't have the TNT in his hands, but he landed it clean, and the champion never saw it coming. And that's, of course, when you get those kind of knockouts. And he got that kind of knockout again. He slipped to his left. Just beautiful. Slipped to his left, got his eyes to go with him a little bit, and then simultaneously, pop, throws the right hand, lands it on the chin, and Mr. Nanshinga never saw it. And he no longer is champion of the world. So it's not only a knockout of the year, but it's for a title. It's also an upset. It was a it was a nobody thought Adrian Curio was leaving that ring with the title, and much less to win it the way that he won it. So that's that's my that's my knockout of the year. Man, I love seeing Teddy demonstrate when he it's not it's one thing when he talks about it, but when he demonstrates it. I mean, look, you, you get all that on pro, you get all this on Pro Box TV. So, Chris Algieri, your knockout of the year. I just want to touch on these guys' picks because they're fantastic. Teddy, they are, one, they are one, great. One of the things that, that we all love about knockouts is they're surprising. Yeah. That was a surprise punch. That guy, and, and not surprising in the fact that he got lucky. I don't believe in luck in no, boxing. No, it was a, it was, that was a beautiful technique. He, he, like you said, he dipped his head offline, put that right hand as the guy was circling out to his left. Beautiful shot, and it iced him. I mean, head on the, on the bottom rope. Yeah. Um, but it's the unexpected. The guy had four four knockouts, like you said. Yeah, you yep. didn't expect him to come in there and starch the champion like that. 100%. Um, so great pick there. And then Sean, your pick, I think that's a that's an under the radar great KO. Yeah. That fight I, I was thinking very similar to how you were thinking in terms of that fight. I remember well, I'm watching this fight and I remember texting texting uh my cohort on on my podcast, uh Dan Canobio, and I'm like, you know, in a way it looks a little human tonight. Or this morning. <laughs> that, guy morning. Right. that guy was solid. That guy was That guy was very guy. solid. And I expected a pretty tough fight. And, you know, anyways, power, yeah, he hurt him in like the fourth or the left hook. But but then Topalos was coming back and now jabbing uh, in a way at times. He was landing the right hook. Um, and in a way made a technical a change. You know, he was looking for the left hook early because he had success with it. But Topalos was starting to counter him with that. And he was just missing with those left hands. Really dangerous uh, exchanges they were having. And anyway, he goes, all right, I'm going to switch to the right hand. I got to stop playing. When he starts throwing it straight, he starts looping it. He's doubling it. And he's landing it. And he's landing here and there. But I'm like, it's not hurting him anymore. He's not able to hurt him. But anyway, never changed. He he just stuck to it. And his stick to it ness was so impressive because it finally got him. And it wasn't the biggest punch he landed, but it was just right. Hit him on the temple. And you saw, like you said, Chris, uh, Sean. He, and he blinded him with the jab. Yes. He, left, he actually left the jab in his face. Just a, and only special guys that are that calm mm -hmm. would be able to take the chance of doing that because you want to cover. You don't want to leave yourself uncovered because you you're giving up defense. He just left the left hand just there long enough, bang, where he never saw the right hand. And Tapalos had his hands up. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like to your point, Teddy, the jab made him keep that hand and blinded himself, and the punch went right through the middle. Perfect 100%. execution. What a technical, brilliant execution. And then Sean, to your point. Just the the, the drama the, the drama of him taking a knee, and I remember he's on one 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 glove as well on that knee, and he's mm -hmm. trying to get up. I'm yep. thinking mm -hmm. about getting up, mm -hmm. and he just said, "My body's not doing it tonight. That's it. I'm yeah. done." Yeah. It, 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 and it was that decision because that yeah. was always my favorite. I love when I love when a guy took a ten count in his face, or if he if, if he stayed on the <laughs> stool. You know, I've yeah. I've had knockouts where I knock guys completely out. I have knockouts where guys quit. I have knockouts where guys take a ten count. My favorite yeah. is is when they quit. Make yeah. make the decision to to not fight me anymore because you don't want anymore. <laughs> so I I can definitely agree with that. But I'm gonna go the whole other way. I'm gonna go the most spectacular knockout that I saw, which is Junto Nakatani and Andrew Maloney. I was at the, I was ringside mm. 
I know Andrew well, so maybe I'm a little, I'm a little, it's a little, it hurt my heart seeing it. Um, but I was so impressed with Junto Nakatani, and I was so impressed with Andrew's um, um, toughness all night long. He was getting outworked in every way. He was getting hurt. He got dropped a few times. He kept pushing forward. But then Nakatani, man, everything's working, but he found a new, a new wrinkle. He's like, all right, I'm hitting this guy with everything. I'm out jabbing. I'm, I'm, I hit him with big left hands. I hit him with right hooks. Let me, ju- let me try an overhand. He, I've never seen him throw an overhand punch in his in his career. He's so technically sound. And he just rolled his head and threw this overhand shot. And, I mean, Andrew went down harder than I've ever seen anyone. So hard that I had to go see him in the back on the stretcher because I was like, man, mm. that was that was hard to watch. I don't want to mm. – I didn't say that to him, obviously. But that was, that, was, that was the most spectacular knockout that I saw this year. And seeing it live in person, like you guys all know. It's very different in person. Yeah. Um, it, 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 takes, it takes the entertainment value out of it, but it, it, it makes it feel more real. So for me, that one that one hit me the hardest. And I know it hit Andrew the hardest too because that was a killer knockout. Yeah, it sure was. And uh, I'm getting the word that we got to keep this show moving. We're, we're down to the final, the final one, the fighter of the year. So, Teddy, we're going to start with you. A lot of great performances. And, and this is a this is a tough one because, you know, you can make an argument for several fighters. But, Teddy, your fighter of the year for 2023. Yeah, look, you're right. I mean, obviously, you could argue the man that Sean and Chris just talked about appropriately. Uh, that he's so damn special in a way. <clears throat> you know, he's got two wins for the year over Fulton, who a lot of people were given a chance, actually, yep. to, to beat him. I was one of them. Me yeah, too. Yeah, I mean, really. And to, and Antapolis, a uh, real solid, solid guy and a, and a, and a real busy guy. So... I, I understand, in a, in a way, you you can't go wrong in that direction. But I'm going to go, for me, it's one guy. It's Crawford. And mm-hmm. I know the argument back is going to be that, Teddy, you only fought one fight. Yeah. But my argument <laughs> right back to you is going to be, did you see who he fought? At yeah, the time, yeah. <laughs> he was a pound-for-pound pound top guy. I don't know if he was number three, number four, whatever he was. He was a pound-for-pound top guy. And, again, Sean touched on this earlier. It wasn't just that he won. It's how he did it. He just took him apart, literally, piece by piece. He, Mm -hmm. he, He literally was like a surgeon, just piece by piece. It got to the point where it was hard to watch. It actually yeah, yeah. got to the point, and, and and again, I have to go back. I'm gonna piggyback. I'm gonna back go back and say, hard and remind myself and remind the people out there, <laughs> hard to watch him take it apart. A guy who was pound for pound one of the top guys. That's the thing. It wouldn't have been so unexpected or so sensational. It wouldn't have got the spot for me if it was just someone else. But it wasn't just someone else. It was Spence, a guy who was unbeaten, a guy who was an Olympian, a guy who was who, who was pound for pound, one of the top guys. It was him. And and to take apart a fighter of that ilk, of that worth, and to do it the way he did it. Wow. I, I and I know it was only one fight for the year. I understand that where some people be saying that he was only I don't care. What a one fight of the year. Well, and Teddy, you know who agrees with you? Who agrees with you is Terrence Crawford because he, he posted <laughs> I'll read I'll read you what he posted. He said, I'm the only fighter to be the top five pound for pound fighter this year, and the way I beat him was unmatched. 2023 fighter of the year is me. Some might say I only fought one time, but that one fight was bigger than any of the others. So, mm. you know, that that's that's Terrence Crawford and, and and I think it's a great pick and uh Sean. <clears throat> yeah, fighter I'll, try, of the I'll, year. I'll, I'll go fast um and there's so many honorable mentions. I think uh on my on the Portaway podcast, Terrence Crawford was my pick on Probox TV. David Benavidez is my pick. Mm. I think when you when you when you uh just you 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 have a really competitive fight with Caleb Plant, and then you end up mopping the floor with Caleb Plant, and then you come back and you have a fight against a fighter that I personally have known 
half my life and I know who this guy is. I know what this guy is capable of. And you just, to me, when you talk about fight of the year, yes, it has to be activity to me. It has to be activity. And I, and I also think that the performance itself, that's why you give it to Terrence Crawford, just, the performance. But the other thing is consistency. Do you, do you look great every fight? And this man, David Benavidez, has looked great year in and year out. This year against two top top five, top ten competitors, he looked the exact same against both guys. And I just think that that's hard to argue with, you know. So um, he's my fighter of the year, uh, David Benavidez, on Pro Box TV. <laughs> yeah, he, he, he had a great year. Chris you Algieri. With, you cannot argue with that guy. I mean, and, and as you said, the quality of the guys that he beat, Plant and Andrade, and the way he did it. I mean, he, again, he... Especially the last fight, Andrade. He just, I mean, he took a good defensive fighter, a guy who's hard to look good against. Yep. You know, a hard, hard guy to to catch up to, and he just he just took him apart. Yeah, That's I mean, great, 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 great picks on both you guys. I mean, Crawford. Listen, like you said, George Crawford made great made made the case for himself really well. I mean, he had great points, all of them. Um, and then Sean, your the points that you made for David Benavidez are great, and 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 for him, it's the consistency. Right, that's what he looks the same. That that's so impressive to to step up the level of competition, but still put on the same performances. So for me, that's why my fighter of the year is actually is Inoue. I know Inoue be. because the consistency. I think I think be. the fact that he stays so consistent and and regular. You know, a guy at that level, he moved up in in weight. Uh, what was the first fight? Even Stephen Fulton was. I mean, that wasn't Stephen Fulton was, was the first fight. Yeah, I know but that was six months ago. What was that? Uh, was six May? months ago, July, oh, yeah. I think it was in July. First fight at twenty-two, takes on undefeated guy who a lot of people, myself included, thought that he had a good chance to win that fight, and puts on a masterclass. Outboxes the boxer, gets him out of there. Perfect, perfect performance, flawless performance. Then he gets a fight to Palos. Palos is tough as hell. He just he just beat um uh upset. What's his name? I was actually there for that fight. Um, Akhmadaliev. And then the he goes belt, out yeah. there and he fights a really, really tough fight, and but still gets him out of there. If he went the decision, I would be really on the fence, be like, ah, I'm gonna give it to Crawford. But the fact that he stopped that guy and stopped him the way that he did, like you said, Sean, I got no idea in a way. Fighter of the yeah. year. Yeah. Man. Well, those those are some great picks. And and look, um, Sean and Chris, Chris, you said that 2022 sucked. And Sean, you said the hopes are that in 2024, we can say that. 2023 sucked, which it didn't, but that means that 2024, <laughs> it'll be a hell of a year if we're saying that 2023 was not a good year. So that's what we're hoping. It's been a great year in boxing. It's been a great year at Pro Box. January 17th, the Wednesday Night Fight Series is back. Sean, you always tell people, we always tell people, download the app. Click on the link, download the app, become a part of Pro Box TV. It has been a great year, and we promise you this. 2024 is going to be even better for boxing, I hope, but definitely for Pro Box TV. So make sure you download. You see these champions and Hall of Famers every single day. Pro Box TV is your boxing channel.